So I'm going to be talking about Magic Johnson's impact on Los Angeles. And just a little stat that I want to point out. Uh, since Magic Johnson's retirement back in the 90s, he was, his net worth was estimated around $15 million. And uh, since the early 2000s, it's actually now $500 million. And that was before he actually purchased the Dodgers. So that's, and that was according to Forge Magazine. So that was a crazy uh, stat that I read about. So I know many of us may recognize Magic Johnson as a 5 10 NBA champ, you know, part of the Dream Team, three time finals MVP, season MVP. But what some of you may not know is that he actually invested in Urban America. And such, uh, many of those were Latino communities and African American communities, communities, such as the ones that we live in today here in Los Angeles. So I'm going to tell you a little bit why Magic Johnson actually matters to the city of Los Angeles. His, uh, the, his, the perception of Magic Johnson actually changed. After his retirement, he, he was seen as this new businessman of Los Angeles. And especially after the 1992 uh, riot in Los Angeles, this is according to Brian S. Shiner in one of his uh, online journals, he was saying that Magic Johnson, he kind of brought hope after all of those, uh, after the riots that we had. And because especially the African American communities, they were in shambles, so he kind of wanted to rebuild that. And uh, he, kinda, he had a really big influence on our city doing that. And like I said, he changed the lives of many, bringing the jobs, like making these new businesses, especially in the African American and Latino community. So here's a preview of my main points I'm going to talk about. I'm going to first tell you about Magic Johnson's first investment here in Los Angeles, and how that led to the expansion of his business, which eventually led to his partnership with Starbucks, and how he's impacted our sports team here in Los Angeles as well. And that's his uh, company, Magic Johnson Enterprises. So the first one I want to talk about is his uh, movie theater here in Los Angeles. Uh, in 1995, he teamed up with Sony Pictures Entertainment, and uh, he actually created, he brought, because he did a lot of research, and uh, he researched the demographics, and he saw that minorities were the, most of them, uh, they were the people going to the movie theaters, but they had to travel outside of the community. So what he did, he brought the movie theaters to them. And he really knew his audience, because, uh, like I said, he studied them, and he came from an urban community community himself. So he he made it this uh, state of the art theater, and towards the end of that year, so the 90, 1996, his movie theater was actually one of the top grossing in all of the U S the U S, which led to the expansion of other uh, movie theaters and other urban communities such as Chicago, Detroit, and Harlem. Now I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. This is the Starbucks logo. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about Magic Johnson's expansion with Starbucks. So, uh, in the 90s, Starbucks was starting to, you know, expand. We started to see more Starbucks throughout um, the whole U.S. And he, he wanted to get the op opportunity, you know, to invest. So, he convinced Howard Schultz, the uh, owner of Starbucks. He actually took him to the movie theater. Uh, he sold him the like, whole movie theater experience. And Howard knew, like, from the moment that uh, he knew his, th these people. So, he really trusted him. Uh, that led to the first partnership with Starbucks, and they ended up. Uh, he ended up owning over 100 chains throughout all of the U.S. and urban communities. Now Schultz and Johnson. Uh, here's a little quote from Magic Johnson that he. Uh, it was on Forbes magazine. Uh, he said, "People said that there's no way Latinos and African Americans will pay three dollars for a cup of coffee. Yes, we will pay three dollars, but we don't eat scones." And what he meant by this is. He wanted these Starbucks to, you know, have their own unique features, uh, since they were in their own uh, urban community. So he changed the pastries to, you know, like uh, such as this, like Zoc to Me Cake, the music from the boring jazz that they have to like classic R and B, and he made it made it a music. Uh, I'm sorry, a meeting place for like the churches and local organizations. And in 2010, he actually it was actually October uh, 19, 2010. He sold all of his uh, chains with Starbucks. And uh, any Los Angeles teams fan here, we, have, we got the Sparks, the Clippers, we've got the Dodgers, of course, and then last but not least, the Lakers. Now, Magic Johnson has played a vital role in uh, the expansion of all of these. Uh, from the Lakers, we know that he brought uh, five championships with the Lakers when he was playing. He's actually the coach in the 1993-1994 season for a little bit. Uh, he made his first investment with the Lakers, and his only investment, in 1994 after uh, his coaching season, and he bought 4.5% of the team for $10 million. And according to the Los Angeles Times writer, uh, it, I'm sorry, it was, uh, it was Brad Turner, he uh, sold 
uh, his 4.5 for about $600 million in 2010, uh, a day after he sold all his Starbucks shares. Now the Dodgers. March 28, uh, 2012, he become, his uh, team, and it, his Magic and his investment team buy the Dodgers for about $2 billion, setting the record for, uh, according to Tyree Kepner, set the record for the largest uh, amount purchased for a franchise. Came first in attendance throughout the MLB, and oh, that was last season, and they're on the, currently on the rise. Last year they won the 2000 Western Division title, which is the first one in about four years, and they did uh, pretty good, so we'll see, let's see how that goes for them this season. On February 11th, he purchased the Los Angeles Sparks. After uh, the WNBA is like a really unsuccessful um, kind of, uh, all the franchises are pretty unsuccessful. So M Melissa Rohan of the Los Angeles Times on February 5th, 2014, spoke to the president of the WNBA, uh, Laura Ritchie, and uh, she, she said that half of the teams were not making profit. So Magic's goal was you know, to ultimately uh, change that. And he, he has plans of uh, this year on his website, says he wants, or was last year, he plans on bringing the NFL to LA. And uh, I don't know if some of you may hear it, such as on the Los Angeles Times, but he's uh, one of the potential bidders of the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, I'm going to uh, review again why magic really matters. He's impacted many of our lives here in Los Angeles, whether we may know it or not. And it all started with that first investment, and uh, eventually led to Starbucks and all the sports teams in, in LA, which we all love. LA is like a winning, they love sports, we love sports here, we love our teams. And uh, personally, I've truly been impacted by Magic Johnson uh, himself. The Starbucks that I work at is uh, one of the ones that he used to own. So I, I can kind of tell you that I'm thankful for you know what he did, and through, for what he did throughout all our communities, and uh, like the Kanye Kanye West once said, you can live through anything if magic made it. <laughs>